In 2021, the web is the world's most ubiquitous platform for applications. Some of the most popular web apps include music streaming, video conferencing, and ride sharing. These apps were created with only one choice for a programming language, JavaScript. Strangely though, JavaScript was not created with these kind of apps in mind. Instead, the authors envisioned a quick and easy to use scripting language that would allow webmasters to do little more than enhance forms or trigger pop-ups. While JavaScript has improved greatly over the years, more ambitious apps and an expansion of the web as a platform may require something more. In 2015, the World Wide Web Consortium proposed WebAssembly, commonly referred to as WASM. This game-changing new feature was eagerly implemented by all the major browser vendors in 2017. WebAssembly provides a way for web browsers and Node.js to run low-level code that better utilizes the hardware of the machine it's running on. Thanks to WebAssembly, the web platform is now open to more CPU-intensive functions beyond what JavaScript can provide. Things like 3D games, augmented reality, video editing, and more. While there may be legitimate criticism of JavaScript's design choices, WebAssembly was not created to somehow fix JavaScript, rather to complement it. In order to be quick and easy to use, JavaScript was designed as a dynamic scripting language. One of the trade-offs with this design is that it needs to be passed, compiled, and optimized at runtime by the execution environment. While JavaScript engines like V8 have gotten extremely good at this, the overhead of the runtime means that JavaScript will never be well suited for processor-heavy tasks. In contrast, WebAssembly provides a way for a very different kind of code to be run through the browser. Binaries that are compiled ahead of time and don't have the overhead of a runtime interpreter. While WebAssembly is still quite new, it's already been utilized in apps you may use or be familiar with, like Figma, which is a collaborative design tool. It makes sense for Figma to use the web as a platform since it's a collaborative tool. But CPU heavy features like interactive design would struggle with JavaScript, which is why Figma has opted to use WebAssembly. To see how WebAssembly works, we're going to look at a much simpler example, a WebAssembly calculator. Since WebAssembly is a low level assembly like language, you generally won't write WebAssembly code directly. Instead, you'll use it as a compilation target for popular languages like C, C Sharp, C++, Java, Rust, or many others. If you're enjoying this video so far, then you'll want to check out DevTrends Pro. Here you'll find even more videos on the most important topics of development that you won't find on this YouTube channel. Plus, Pro members get all our videos at least a month earlier. To begin a free trial, head over to devtrends.io slash pro. For this example, we're going to use AssemblyScript. This language is actually a strict variant of TypeScript and uses the Binarian library to compile to WebAssembly. AssemblyScript is easy to set up using NPM, and the syntax will look familiar to any developer familiar with TypeScript. AssemblyScript uses TypeScript files, and so we've created a calc.ts file. For this simple example, our calculator will have just one function, add which adds two numbers, a and b. The first thing to notice is that we're exporting the function from our file, as WebAssembly works on a system of modules similar to modern JavaScript. The next thing to notice is that a and b both have a type i32, and the add function returns a value of this type as well. i32 is not a standard JavaScript primitive. It represents the 32-bit signed integer type of WebAssembly. After you've installed the AssemblyScript compiler using npm and provided configuration, you can compile the TypeScript source file to WebAssembly using the command npx ascalc.ts, where ASC is the AssemblyScript compiler library. The compiler will output the bytecode to a .wasm file, which we'll be loading in the browser in a moment. It'll also output this .wat file, which stands for WebAssembly text. This is a human readable version of the binary that's handy for debugging. It also allows you to see how your source code has been transformed into WebAssembly. Now that we have our WASM powered add function, we'll need this HTML interface to consume it. 
It includes two text inputs, one for the A value and one for the B value. It has a button which will trigger the calculation. It also has a paragraph tag where we can render the result on the page. Finally, we have a script tag where we're loading a JavaScript module. WebAssembly can't interact directly with the DOM, so we'll need JavaScript to act as an intermediary. In our JavaScript module, index.js, we have an immediately invoked function which will load our WASM module and link it to the form. In this function, we fetch our calc.wasm file and pass the returned value to the instantiate streaming method of the WebAssembly API. This method will compile and instantiate our WebAssembly module. Next, we'll get the button from our interface and attach a click listener to it. Inside the click listener, we'll first get the values of A and B from the text inputs. Now we can use the add method exported by our WASM module and pass it the values that we want to add. We'll then render the result to the page. If we now open the HTML document in Chrome and check the Network tab of DevTools, you'll see that our WASM file is fetched in much the same way other assets are. We can also inspect the source of our WASM file by using the Sources feature of DevTools, which would help us with debugging should we have any problems. And finally, if we add some values to the inputs and click the button, we see the correct result thanks to our WASM-powered add function. So how much faster is WebAssembly than JavaScript? One popular benchmark puts it around 30% faster on desktop and around 60% on mobile. However, it's important to note that in a tiny application like our calculator, the difference in speed would have no perceptible effect on user experience. While JavaScript may be weighed down by a runtime, a trivial calculation like adding two numbers would still be completed in a matter of microseconds. WebAssembly only becomes useful where there are millions of calculations per second in tasks like 3D graphics rendering or video editing. WebAssembly is currently at version 1. The proposed features for the next version will give WebAssembly faster execution through parallelism and threads, and also make it a more flexible language with more proposed types and better exception handling. There are also proposed features to improve the WebAssembly JavaScript API. For example, to allow WebAssembly modules to be imported, just like regular ES modules. WebAssembly provides a way for browsers and Node.js to run low-level code that's optimized for performance. This code can be written in popular compiled languages like Rust, C++, or Java. WebAssembly is not intended to replace JavaScript. Rather, it's there to tackle CPU-heavy tasks that JavaScript is not designed for. In the near future, we can expect WebAssembly to power a new generation of web applications requiring native performance. These may include 3D video games, image and video processing, augmented reality, CAD applications, encryption, scientific simulation, and whatever else you might imagine. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to keep up with the latest developer tools and trends, be sure to check out our membership site, DevTrends Pro. Here you'll find exclusive videos that we don't release on YouTube, plus you'll be able to access our content a month or so earlier. You can start a free trial by heading over to devtrends.io slash pro.